Good early morning to you all. Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. Today's plans have changed. As, as much as I like to be in control and make plans, as you know, living in an RV, you're gonna get thrown some curveballs and you're gonna have to adjust your plans and make the most of it. Don't get deja vu. If you've been with me on this channel, I feel like we've done this five times. Yeah. The fridge, the Han Solo Dometic Americana, like every other Dometic Americana, five of them in a row has now gone out. She don't work. Internet's working great. I will be uploading this video with some connecting internet. Check out the video description below for unlimited high speed internet on the road or on the go. I had my truck half packed to go camping, Diana and I, and um, uh, I noticed two days ago that there was water seeping out underneath the freezer line here. Well, that's not good. I looked in there, it was none of my food, but all my food was soft and this wasn't keeping cool. Looked up here, the check, check light wasn't on, so gas was working. I flipped it over to auto, tried to run it for 24 hours on auto only, which draws like 360 watts or something crazy, and still nothing. In the fridge, same thing. I grabbed my thermostat, brought it all the way up. As you can see, it's actually in there with the, the thing all the way up to the highest, coldest, I mean, coldest spot. And for whatever reason, this fridge no longer works. I've had fridges go out just on propane and you could still use them for AC, but this one has conked out. And although you can't smell it in the front, on the outside, in case this ever happens to you five times in a row, if it smells like a cat litter box back here, not poop, but a cat litter box that you haven't changed in a while, strong ammonia smell, that means your fridge is toast. These were never meant to run full time, ever. They're meant as a camping thing, a couple times a year. Once the ammonia goes out in these, yeah, you can replace the whole heating cooling system for about $500 or something like that. Let me get in the shade. Or you can just say, screw it, buy a brand new Dometic Americana, which I did one time in my life at a cost of, I believe, $2,800 for a new Dometic Americana. And guess how much that brand new fridge lasted? Two years and then the same thing happened. I will never buy, ever, ever, ever buy another dual propane electric Dometic fridge. Went to Home Depot last night and I already got my replacement. This is actually going to be a much smaller fridge than I put in Frida, my Tioga. It is a Vasani again, but it's a 4.5 cubic foot instead of a 7.7. .7. I just don't want to drill and cut out a bunch of stuff. So this is gonna have gaps. It's gonna have a one inch gap on each side and it's gonna have a gap at the top that I'm gonna have to fill in. But I'd rather fill in a gap than actually have to cut into my Bigfoot. Also, even though this is a 4.5, there is going to be more room in this much smaller fridge than the Dometic Americana because it's not going to have the gas and compressor on the back. Much more storage in a smaller fridge and very, very efficient on electric. Again, with my solar, when the trailer's hooked up, we've got 2,750 watts of solar on the roof and nearly a thousand amp hours of lithium battery. So this is gonna be nothing. But hey, lucky for me, this happened here at my property in Sholo at Taterland instead of on the road. So in this shed, Babe the Blue Box, I've got my freezer that I keep all the time for our ice cream and our other meats and everything else. This tiny little corner right there, that is the contents of my freezer that went out. I was able to save everything. And right next door, I have this little cooler. This is the contents of my fridge, believe it or not. So I have a way to keep my fridge stuff cold and my freezer stuff frozen right now. So this is my project today. Let's go ahead and unplug it. Let's go ahead and find the propane line and cap off the propane line. Let's unscrew all these bolts and finish on the inside and we'll yank this sucker out again. By the way, in case you have to do this, the inside's pretty easy. This top piece just snaps off and then there's two screws on the top. They're actually uh, square bit screws that go right up into there. And then on the bottom, 
you have to open up this and you'll have two more square screws on both ends. All right, on the fuse panel, I'm gonna pull out the three amp fridge fuse right here, because I'm gonna be messing with the DC unconnecting that. We'll turn off the propane. I have bypassed my main tank for this one right here. Make sure it's all the way off. Then we'll make sure that we have all of the gas out of the line. Light up this until it goes out. Good to go, no propane in the line. And on the outside, there's only two screws in the back. One of them is right there on that silver plate right there, another square bit. The other one, I have to take out these two screws to take this off to get that other screw out. And then the DC is coming in right here. These white and black wires right here that go into this. I'm gonna disconnect these, cap off the positive and negative 12 volt right here, put that away because we don't need it. And then propane is probably on the, also on the other side of this because this is it, right? Yeah, this is it. Yeah, we can't see it till we get over here. All right, got the gas plate off, removed actually two screws. I didn't see that one right there. So this is all free on the bottom. I got the DC lines wrapped with tape. I'm actually going to keep the fuse out of this, but I'm gonna keep these lines here because having a 12 volt accessory right here could be something that I utilize later. Maybe I wanna put in a small marine Bluetooth receiver right there for a music. Maybe a couple speakers will go up here later. So having 12 volt, and we're gonna use this AC outlet for the fridge anyway. So we should be, fr oh, propane, propane. And I'm telling you, we're gonna save so much propane because now it's just for cooking and the water heater. Come on. Oh, good Lord. It's righty tighty lefty loosey, right? I think. Okay, yes it was. I did go to Home Depot. I got my 3 8 inch uh, flared cap here and some propane tape. Make sure it's really off slowly. Don't wanna freeze my hand. Nope, we're good. There we go, see, it's a, it's a flared end right there. That means it needs a special uh, cap, which I have. which I don't have. I had got the female. Oh, for crying out. I bought the same, I need a male cat. Ugh, Eric. That's a long drive back to Home Depot today. Uh, that's okay, we'll go to Home Depot here later. Let me just make sure that that's the right size, right threads. Yep, that is the one. It fits perfectly on the fridge, but I don't need to cap the fridge. I need to cap the propane line. <laughs> All right, we should be free. Let's go see on the inside. All right, sorry Han Solo, you have lost the force. You are thawing in your carbonite and no longer cool. Okay, what am I missing here? Put all those off. Let's see. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. There's one right there. It's like this whole flume has to come off to get to that one right there. Of course. All right, I got the metal around this out. See, right there. Oh, there's two back there. I can't fit, hmm. I think I'm gonna keep taking things apart here to get to them. We're free. We are officially free. Now what? Uh, okay. Perhaps the force is still strong with this fridge. Am I missing something here? We're hitting the wall. And yet, we've still got the entire heating coil to clear. How do you... Do I have to turn it? Maybe I have to turn it. 
turn it. Oh, I gotta turn it around the wall. Ah, okay. Hundred and nineteen pounds, it says. I feel it. Well, you know, count it. I count that as a win. All right, forgive the sound of the wind above. I've got the rooftop air conditioner on because uh, a little mini split was not keeping up. So like for right now, we're bringing in 1,400. We're drawing 1,600. So we're going down now a little bit, but I gotta seal this up. I have vacuumed everything. All the mud daubers that were stuck up here, just be thankful you didn't see it. So I'm gonna measure a piece of plywood to fit over that hole. And as well as this one, we don't need this vent anymore either. It'll keep us better insulated here. So I'll cut those pieces and get them drilled in. All right, a little darker over here in this corner now, huh? I used some one inch foam gap spray to fill in anywhere where I saw light on the bottom. Uh, that's, so that's very sealed and weatherproof. I did have to leave one little gap in the top piece for the solar that's coming in. I'm gonna wrap some more tape around that where it might touch the wood. But otherwise we are fully enclosed now and I think ready to bring in the new fridge. Well, hold on. Still gotta cap this propane line. Uh, Danny's at Home Depot right now. I asked him to get me what I need. We'll see if he can get it. Well, we're gonna have to go try somewhere else to find those plugs. Danny couldn't find them in town today either. In the meantime, I got the Vasani 4.5 cubic fridge unboxed, plugged in right now, cause it's like, what, probably 90 degrees in here. It's pulling the full 89 watts, 89 watts. But once it gets into power save and reaches temperature, it'll go down a lot more than that. Still, even 89 is a far cry from 360 watts. So size wise, it's about identical to my RV fridge that was already in there. Okay, yeah. All right, well, we don't need to waste power right now. <laughs> Nobody will ever know. How are they gonna know? How are they ever gonna know? Looks good. I wanna take a break. I'm gonna cut back in tomorrow, actually, uh, because my buddy Sean up in New Jersey from that nomadic couple was telling me about using that propane line as an accessory, which makes perfect sense. The line's already there. Instead of capping it, I wanna go talk to Owen's propane or maybe Griffin's propane and see if there's an adapter on there where I can buy or make a, a, a hose to have a quick connect for either an inside heater or to have a quick connect literally right here on the other side of the wood, a quick connect plug in a grill, uh, maybe my little propane fireplace. It's, it's already there, just plug it in. So hold off on the cap. I need to go pick up Diana from work. I'll cut back in tomorrow. All right, it is the next day. Come back from Home Depot in the truck and uh, got a few things I wanna show you. I actually upgraded to this awesome little digital thermometer. It's a dual zone thermometer. It's got a magnet on the back and a stand, but the magnet works really well. And I don't know if I would travel with it, but at just first glance, we can just look in and see that the fridge is at 34 degrees and the freezer's at negative eight. And the reason you're able to do that is because you have these battery operated packs and I just set mine in there. They say you're supposed to use a something for it. But again, this is just set in there like that. And it's then I have to open the fridge and look at a thermometer all the time. I'll actually move that one to the freezer outside. But I, I really like this system. You can just at a glance, look at it, come in, make a minute little adjustment right here on the knob based on the time of year, whether it's winter or summer. Maybe you got to turn it up in the summer and turn it down in the winter. But uh, I like that. And it's gray. It kind of matches the fridge and freezer also. So how are we going to support this thing? Well, I think I got a little lucky here <laughs> and I don't know why, but I can fit a two by four on each side of the fridge in the gap 
perfectly. There's literally three and a half inches from the fridge to the wall on both sides. And I gotta just kind of chalk that up to just being incredibly lucky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut two by four lengths all the way down from the bottom to the top across here like this. And I'm gonna secure them with these three quarter inch corner braces. I'll show you one. They are very small. So one side is gonna go into the fridge and the other side is going to drill into the piece of wood. And then the wood is also gonna have one, well, several along, along the edge here. Now we don't wanna go through the wall and obviously we don't wanna screw too far into the freezer. We've got about an inch and a half before we're gonna have a problem. So I got half inch self drilling screws. Very small, let me open one up and show you. Yep, they are self drilling Phillips head screws and they don't stick out that much. And that'll be great for both in the fridge, in the two by four, and in the side of the wall here. So that's how I'm going to brace the fridge. Let me go cut some lumber and put this together and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, I got the first support beam in here. I just wanna show you my thinking behind this. It's just gonna be a hack job and I know I'm doing everything wrong, but watch till the end because everything always works out. I got these uh, screws in there on both sides going into the stud, into the wood on the side without coming out and sticking out in, so that's good and solid. On the bottom, same thing. I went into the bottom of the plate instead of the wall over here because we just got styrofoam right there and I wanted it to be heavily supported. So I'm gonna repeat this process on both sides to get my three and a half inches of support. And then once that's done, I'll be able to pre-install several of these along like this, screwed in with that open so that when you slide the fridge in from the front, this direction, it'll butt up to this piece of wood where I can stick my screwdriver in there and secure it uh, on both the sides and the top once we're done. All right, I did my measurements for inside to find out how far I want the fridge to stick out. I want the base of it to be at the edge and then the doors are gonna be out here so you can still grab onto the lip of the door and secure the door. Stick around to the end. I'm gonna show you also how I'm gonna keep the doors from flipping open on the road, but I picked uh, six inches. So then on my refrigerator, I started here at this base, went back six inches, and I put my three brackets like this on both sides so that it can slide in. And then these are gonna be able to mount to the wood here. So let me get Diana's help to put the fridge back in here and then we'll secure it in. All right, she fits like a glove. It's nice coming up with a plan and executing it. Got it in there. I haven't screwed it into the two by four yet, but it's very snug and very solid on both sides. Same thing there. Just got to get my drill bit in. I made it easier for me to be able to finish this project by screwing it into the fridge first, obviously. What do you think, Opie? Man, is that where my cat treats are, Dad? That's where more cat treats will go, yes. So I'll finish this up and then I'll show you and blocking off all the open space too. So I'll show you what uh, material I'm gonna use to fill in the gaps here. But first I wanna show you what I'm gonna do to lock the fridge. I got these on Amazon. Uh, they are, they're like baby proof, kid proof locks. And they got 3M adhesive on them. And essentially what you would do is you'd put them like here on the door and like that. And then you pull where my index finger is. I can only, I only have one end to show you, but you pull this and that'll detach. Well, it just fell, but that'll pivot this up like this. So I'll just leave these open when I'm parked and when I'm driving, they'll be in the locked position so that the fridge and freezer doesn't pop out. So I'll install these and then I'll get my measurements. Uh, actually, let's go look at the wood I got. This is the piece of, well, I'm gonna call it wood. I think it's actually called wainscoting. It's that stuff that goes on the bottom. It, you flip it this way and it goes around the wall and then has a piece of trim, but it was 14 bucks compared to another piece I was looking at that was $40 and it's quarter inch pliable. It's paintable. So I'll get this cut up and uh, screwed in. And I got the locks installed. So it's road proof, easy. Just push your finger, lock those down. They can even stay in the, the down position like this. And then they're not even in the way of anything. So let me uh, get these pieces of wood cut and then we might even paint them actually. Yeah.
always drink before you cut. Don't ask me why, it just served me good luck in the past. It's a rule in carpentry, you have to sip a beer before you cut. Measure once, drink twice. That was close, that was close. Test fit all of my pieces of uh, what are we calling this? My molding, my uh, my gap filler. I'm calling this gap filler. So we have all the right pieces here. However, we're not sticking with white, and I don't like brown. So at the Home Depot, we got this all surface flawless finish satin steel. Hey, Eric, did you plan that? It's the same color as your fridge. <laughs> so, I'm gonna take the... <laughs> I know you guys tease me all the time. Sometimes I just get lucky. Sometimes I plan this stuff out, you know? I'm gonna go spray paint all of these pieces satin silver, come. Okay? okay, I've carefully picked this place to paint on the rocks here due to the current weather situation. If you look behind me at the American flag waving, going that way right there. That means all of the extra wind spray will go that way, away from anyone's rig or buildings, and it's the neighbor's problem now. <laughs> we don't have any neighbors, just kidding. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Oh, yeah. Wait 30 minutes and do a second coat. Holy cow. <laughs> I'm exhausted, guys. Look, it's dark again. <laughs> this this two-day project. This was the worst one yet. This was the worst. But it looks the best. It looks the best. Who cares? I don't care that it doesn't fill the gap. Now, some people watching this might say, I'm going to go bigger, Eric. Do it. Do it. You can cut out to the ceiling. I've done it before. This is where my furnace is. You can disconnect. I got, there's like a vent that goes up from the furnace that curves right here in this space. You could divert that. You could put in a hard angle or something and cut down into that. And, and, and you could probably do a bigger fridge. I don't need a bigger fridge, period. I am so happy with this fridge. I've always liked these Vasani fridges. 33 degrees in the fridge, negative eight in the freezer. I mean, oh yeah, I need one of those, I forgot. I do this rotating thing where the one on the right is the coldest when I run out and I forget to put them in the fridge. And then the next one, the warm one, comes in on this side, we push them all this way, and in 30 minutes, that's my beer ready to go. <laughs> but yeah, that's locked in, fridge looks good. We'll lock in the fridge as if we're gonna go. And I, you know what, I don't care. I literally don't care what people have to say because that worked for me. This fridge is bigger than a lot of fridges I've had in vans down the road. So um, it's plenty for me. And I love the grape spray paint. Man, that turned out so good. So clean. My edges, somebody's OCD might bother them that the lines go this way on top and go down. <laughs> I'm exhausted, guys. This was a long hard project and i know it's not the last time i'm gonna do it <sighs> anyways hope i gave you courage to do the same those gas electric refrigerators garbage they're just garbage 
Do me a favor, guys. Give me a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Leave a comment and say, hey, bridge looks good, Eric. It'll really help me out. We're getting right back to normal videos after this, I promise. Thanks for being patient. Guys, have a great week. Goodbye. Okay,